welcome everyone to this section of our topic. We call it Microsoft Excel uh, Basics or the elements of the spreadsheet. And I would like to start with the presumption that you are already familiar with the electronic spreadsheet such as the Microsoft Excel application. So before we move on to the formulas and functions, of our topic, let's first uh, recall the uh, basic elements of Microsoft Excel, such as the cell, active cell, row, column, range, row heading, column heading, cell address, formula bar, worksheet, workbook, and cell content. So let's get to know each of these elements so that it would be easy for us to interact with this application as we go about with our Excel activities. So first is the cell. When we see cell, it is a rectangular area formed by the intersection of a row and a column. So example, this is already a cell or each of the rectangular area here is the what we call cell or they are cells each of this. The selected cell in which data is entered when you begin typing, like I would like to type a content here, okay? This one is the what we call active cell. There is only one active cell in each worksheet or every time you work on the workbook or in Excel application. This one is the what we call active cell. Okay, next is row. Row runs horizontally in the grid layout of a worksheet. This is the what we call a row. It is headed by number. Example, this part of a worksheet is the what called row one, row two, row six, row eight. Again, row runs horizontally in the grid layout of a worksheet. Next is column. Column runs vertically in the grid layout of a worksheet. So if a row is horizontally, the column is vertically. It runs vertically. It is headed by letters such as column A, column B, column C, and column D. These are the what we call column. Next is range. Range is a collection of selected cells. When I select certain cells in a worksheet, I call this range. The name of this range is, I should start naming it with the column letter and the row number, which is B2. Oops. So in this range, it is named as P2, 2, and we'll end here, E7. Okay, we have to name a cell with its uh, column letter and row number. That's about range. Row heading is used to identify each row in a worksheet located at the left of each row and are indicated by numbers. So this is the what we call row heading. They identify the number of a certain row. Column heading. It is a colored row of letters used to identify each column within the sheet or workbook. So this is the what we call column heading. It is used to identify the column name of the columns in a worksheet. Next, we have cell address. Cell address is a combination of a column letter and a row number that identifies a cell on a worksheet. So each cell here has its own name or the what we call cell address. So it's just like, for example, the number 12 here, the cell address of this cell content is, okay, it's C4. Okay, you can also see the, the, the name of the cell or the what we call cell address in the 
name box or the what we call address bar or the what we call name box. So the name of this cell is C4. Okay? And if we try to change the active cell, the name also in the name box changes. So it's a current uh, location or current or the what we call active cell. So now it is already D5 or the name of this active cell is already D5. Okay, so next we have E3. Next we have J4. Okay, so cell address is J4. The importance of cell address is that you have to use it when you perform some calculations. For example, I would like to sum up the two values here, the 12 and the 5. So I'll be using their uh, name or what we call cell address by just clicking that particular cell. Then its cell address will just appear here. Then I'll use an operator addition. And then I'll just click on another value and its cell address will just appear, okay? Just like C4 and C5. So let's try to sum up the value in the C4 or in cell address C4 and in cell address C5. So to display the result, we have to just click enter key. Then we have 17. Is it right? Is 12 plus 5, 17? And if you change the value in that particular cell, like for example, I'd like to change the content here into 8. And if I'll press enter key, automatically the, the value or the result will update or will change into its exact uh, computation, okay, or result. That's it. Next, we have formula bar, okay? So earlier, we are able to perform computation of the two values here using the addition operator. And you can see only the result of the computation. You cannot see what you have typed in that particular cell because it hides the formula. But you can see the formula in the formula bar. Okay, so this is the what we call formula bar. It's where you can edit the content of cell or where you can see the formula entered in a certain cell. So it's called as formula bar. Next, we have worksheet. So worksheet is a collection of cells where you keep and manipulate data. So worksheet is this whole uh, collection of cells. And if you want to add more sheets in this single workbook, you can just simply click plus here and then additional sheet will just be added. If you want more sheets, just click add here. That means you are to add sheets or worksheets in this file. And you can name each sheet with your desired name. That's like name it with ABC. That's it. So I am in sheet A. Next is workbook. Workbook is a Microsoft Excel, is a Microsoft Excel file that contains one or more worksheets. So, for example, this uh, workbook is named as Book 1 or its default file name, if you can see here in the title bar, Book Book 1-Excel, meaning the default uh, workbook name or file name of this uh, file in Microsoft Excel is Book 1. It contains sheets or worksheets such as Worksheet A, B, and C. And you can have more sheets as desired. And the whole thing here, if we are to save this file, okay, it will be called as workbook file or book, okay? So the, the file which we call create, which is created in Microsoft Excel is the what we call workbook. Or the type of file created in Microsoft Excel is the what we call workbook. Next is cell content cell content is any information or data you enter into a spreadsheet okay so if you enter anything here it will be called a cell content for example name 
So it is contained in a certain cell. The cell is H4. H4 cell has a name, cell content. Okay, next is age. Age is the content of the cell, of cell I4, and so on. Everything here is the what we call cell content. Cell, this is cell content. It is contents of the cell. So that would be all for the, the basic elements of the Microsoft Excel. And I hope the demonstration earlier had helped you understand each element. Thank you. Earlier, I have presented to you the Microsoft Excel basic elements or the cell basics. They are the cell, active cell, row, column, range, row heading, column heading, cell address, formula bar, worksheet, workbook, and cell content. At this point, I would like to discuss to you the basics of Microsoft Excel formulas. Let's learn the basics of Excel formulas. In this section, we shall be having the definition, the order of precedence, cell references, and the creation of formula in Microsoft Excel. Let's start it with a definition. What is a formula? In Excel, formula refers to an expression that returns a specific result. And in performing a formula, Excel interprets it in order of precedence. So what's the order of precedence in Excel formulas? So if you can see, I have here uh, organized the order of uh, precedence as to how Microsoft Excel interpret the formula that we create in the workbook. First here we have the percent. Second in line, we have the exponentiation. Third in line, we have here the equal order of priority, then the multiplication and the division. And the fourth in line is also we have here the equal order of priority, the addition and the subtraction. But of four uh, order of operators presented earlier, if you can see in a formula that there is this what we call parenthesis, okay? We have to change the order of evaluation or we first have to perform no, the operation enclosed in parentheses because that is the part of the formula to be calculated first by Microsoft Excel. Let's try to recall the uh, math mathematical rules we observe in performing an equation of multiple operations. So we call it PEMDAS, if you are familiar. And in the order of operations for PEMDAS is here. Anyway, we call it uh, also, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P in PEMDAS stands for parentheses, E for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, S for subtraction. If you can see here, the multiplication and division is of equal priority. And if, I, if they are together in a computation or in an equation, we have to follow the left to right order rule. That means whichever comes first in the equation will be performed first. For example, if the division comes first in a series of equation in a single uh, statement, of a formula or of equation, we shall be uh, dividing first before multiplying. And it's also true with the addition and subtraction. Since they are of equal priority, we have to observe the left to right order rule, meaning we first have to perform the left operator to the right, from the left to right. Let's try to take this example. We have here the equation five plus 10 divided by two times five minus, inside the parentheses, we have to compute first the 50 minus 40. So in this equation, we have here how many operators? We have the addition, the division, multiplication, the subtraction, and the other subtraction is inside the parentheses. So if you can recall earlier, the order of priority, we have to consider first 
the inside of the parenthesis if there is a parenthesis in our equation. Okay, so since there is a parenthesis, that means the inside here will be performed first. That means we first have to subtract the 40 from the 50. And that would give us this. Okay, so we computed first the inside of the parenthesis because that's the first priority. Okay, so we already have uh, one down. We have already addition, the division, the multiplication, and the subtraction. So of four operators here, we have to specify or we have to really check no, which one will be prioritized first. So since the division and the multiplication is in the third uh, order priority or we first prioritize over the addition and subtraction, we have to perform the left to right order rule because these two operators are of equal order priority, the division and the multiplication. And that means since they are of equal order of priority, we have to observe the left to right order rule. That means we first have to compute this one, whichever comes first, no? Followed by the this one. Or we have to first divide 10 no, over 2 and then multiply it with 5. Okay, so let's uh, bring down. That would mean 5 plus 5 because 10 here is already 5 because we first divide. Okay, the next thing we are to perform is the multiplication because it's our priority over the addition and the subtraction. And that would give us 25. 5 times 5 would mean 25. Okay, so we only have two more operators left. And since the addition and the subtraction has or has equal order priority or they are of equal order priority, they both are being prioritized by the Excel. That means we shall observe the left to right order rule or the what we call whichever comes first in the equation will be performed first. So since the addition comes first here, we shall be adding this first. That would give us 30. 5 plus 25 would mean 30. And we shall be subtracting 10 from it. And the final result will be 20. And if you try to check this uh, uh, equation to make us a Excel, Okay, and the program will give you this result, I'm sure. So that means we have to first perform the inside of the parentheses, that's our first priority, followed by the division because uh, division and multiplication are of equal priority and we have to observe the left to right order rule. This is the left and this is the right. That would mean we perform the, this one before this one. Next, we have the multiplication, then the addition, and the subtraction. So that's that. What that's the what we mean order of precedence, and that's also how Microsoft Excel interpret the formula that we enter to the application. Let's move on to cell references. So as I've said earlier, there is an importance of this what we call cell address or the what we call cell references, because if you change the content of a cell, it would be easy for you to see the updated result. There are two types of cell references or cell address. The first one is the what we call relative. This is the type of reference which adjusts to its exact location when copied. Later in another video, you can see the difference of the relative reference and the other type. Next is the what we call absolute reference. Absolute reference is a cell reference that won't change when copied. And in order for you to make a reference absolute, you have to use the dollar symbol. And the, this one is also shown in a lecture video, which will be seen, you will be viewing in a little later. Okay, so another video will be uh, open for you later to, uh, to, to see how to enter a formula in the Microsoft Excel. Okay, so let's now move on. Let's uh, check if you've learned from what I had uh, discussed with you about the definition, the order of precedence, and the cell references. 
But you can only answer this if you have also watched the video as to how you are to enter a formula. Okay, so first, this type of reference adjusts to its exact location when copied. What do you think is this type of cell reference? Is it A? Is it B? A is absolute reference, B is a relative reference, C is a formula, and D is a function. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter B. Okay, second item. It is a cell reference that won't change when copied. Is it A, absolute reference, B, relative reference, C, formula, and B, function? What's the correct answer? It's absolute reference. Next item. It refers to the basic document in Excel. Typically, it is consists of three worksheets. What is this? Is it A cell, B range, C worksheet, and B workbook? The correct answer is workbook. Fourth item. It is part of a workbook with, which consists of cells organized into columns and rows. Is it A cell, B range, C worksheet, or D workbook? What's the correct answer? Correct answer is letter C. And the last item. It is part of the worksheet, which is located at the intersection of column and row. What is this? Is it A, cell, B, range, C, worksheet, D, workbook? What's the correct answer? The correct answer is letter A. And that would be all for her, our lesson today. I hope you've learned from what I have discussed. Thank you.